Okay, for um, China High Speed Rail, I'm going to give you a look here at uh, what it's like. This is a first class section. You notice that in the first class, the seats are bigger. There's two and two abreast rather than um, three and three. So that's one advantage. Also, um, the trays and things are different. These trays on this one are actually metal, not plastic. They're bigger, they're sturdier, they pull out like that. You've got uh, power outlets next to every uh, section so you can power up your gear. And you've got things like uh, footrest. The tickets, what do they look like? Well, they're either going to be blue like this, which are the full tickets, or they're going to be in a red sheet of paper, depending if you bought them at the station or at a ticket agency. Uh, on the back of the ticket, of course, is... The All of the train has their own magazine section in back of the seat ahead of you. This one has the latest guide, 187, and it's basically got uh, everything you could want to ask about the train, and some articles about transportation and travel, and various cities that you want to go to are all included in the mag. Uh, first class, you also get. Um, free tea and coffee and uh, they bring around popcorn and haagen ice cream and things like that are, are extra but um, there's also a VIP class that's one up from this the VIP class is not on every train it's on only the trains that are run popular from Shanghai to the rest of the Jiangsu Delta and some of the more popular areas surrounding Beijing the longer halls they don't have the VIP section but if I get a chance I'll show you the VIP sections have basically these big round luxurious leather seats that take the space up of two of these chairs and that's for one chair and inside that seat you've got your own trays you've got your own pull-out LCD monitor or LED monitor and more amenities and things like that in the VIP section the VIP section also has a waiting room that is only for VIP where you can get uh, free beverages and things like that so it's um, about 50% more expensive usually for the VIP and this first class right here is about 20 to 30 percent more than the regular ticket second class three abreast no lumbar support which is nice no leg rest and uh, less privacy in the dining car there are usually eight cars at the high-speed rail uh, CRH and the fourth car or the middle car is usually the dining car and that's where you can get uh, food and you can get drinks and um, sometimes uh, other things too um, there are beer but no cocktails and as you can see you have a little counter here you've got the little the, the wide seats that you can sit down the bench seats in the dining car but you have to purchase something they even have a menu here that you can see uh, in English and Chinese and uh, that's what you can get in the dining car a couple different kinds of beer you can get some instant coffee you can get some microwaved rice some chips some other things haagen ice cream is on here the cooler back there they have an agreement with CRH to serve haagen on every uh, line and then of course the spring water you get one free bottle it's from Tibet it's really good really expensive but uh, that's part of the perks of the high-speed rail the restrooms what do they look like well they look a lot like the planes airplane restrooms where you have like a metal toilet stainless steel and a stainless steel sink and you've got a soap dispenser and you've got uh, you know water and things like that that you need even a power outlet on the less luxurious high-speed rail lines the ones that were built uh, before the newest ones they don't even have a western style toilet they have just a hole in the floor which uh, can be difficult when you're traveling over 200 kilometers per hour and everything is shaking and uh, you basically can't uh, stand up okay an example of the second class bathrooms which uh, have the Chinese toilet hole in the ground you balance you do your business and hope you don't fall in with the uh, train going at about 230 240 kilometers per hour a view of Fujian province high-speed rail and um, you'll notice very hilly very mountainous 
and uh, basically a lot of development still going on. Um, a lot of uh, cities here are in the middle of their development, which is curious because the coastal cities you would think would already be developed and built out, but they're not. The government uh, focused on other projects. But um, in this part of China, uh, you get some interesting teas because of the altitude of the mountains. You can grow some really great teas up in these hills. And as with grapes for wine, the tannins and the wine, uh, the grapes develop differently with a different altitude, sun, rain, and soil conditions. Same goes with tea. And when you get these side by side, several varieties of tea, for example, the green teas of the mountain mountains and the green teas of the valleys, you'll taste it. The acidity is different and the characteristics are very different than um, what uh, most of you have probably had. So it's worth it. It's worth uh, trying to find these varieties and understanding um, where they come from. And uh, it can definitely be one of the benefits of traveling around China. Hot water dispensers are on board. I'm not sure if it's filtered or not. So um, that would be my, my biggest thing is it's filtered. But uh, you can get hot water for your tea or whatever anytime through here. And there you have it. That's uh, probably the most comprehensive review of China's high-speed rail that um, you're going to find. Um, I like traveling high-speed rail simply because you get more space, high speed, you get to talk to people, and you get to store more luggage without an extra fee. And you get to go to just as many locations as you can if you fly. Um, and that's, that's why I choose to go high-speed rail.